let your team be creative, strive for your team to be agile. Our work is most exciting and our success is often strongest when we're not afraid to experiment and we're not afraid to be flexible and adaptable to the situations. Hello, my customer success friends. Eri Ezips here for CSM Practice, the customer success consulting firm. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on your notifications. Today I have with me Abby Hammer for Churn Zero. Hello, Abby. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to chat today. Well, the reason I wanted to have you on board is to, you know, after COVID-19, most of the customer success uh, teams that I speak with are hammering down and optimizing the way they communicate with customers. Mm -hmm. So, so key for us to continuously, you know, have the right cadence with them, ask the right questions and mm -hmm. talk about value that we can bring that's relevant. So I'm super excited to have you in because you actually work with so many customer success teams and with your application for customer success, Churn Zero, you can see what customer success teams are doing with regards to scaling those communications yeah. as well. So in today's session, I really wanted to double down on that topic. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's something my team thinks about a lot in terms of how we work with our customers, but we also think about it a lot in terms of how we advise our customers to work with their customers. We've seen some things develop out of this unique moment in our history uh, that I think will become sort of table stakes, just applicable for how we do modern customer success going forward. So certainly a, a topic near and dear to my heart. I agree. Mm -hmm. So let's go for the first question that I have for you. Like I said, you work with a lot of companies to improve their customer success strategy and scaling using Churn Zero. Do you see any impact on how often customer success teams communicate with their customers since COVID-19? And um, do you see a change in cadence at the mm -hmm. very least? And if so, mm -hmm. what are you seeing some of the changes since the pandemic? Yeah, you know, I had a little sort of lovely geek out moment with my own product as I was looking at what our customers did, um, you know, because it tells a really interesting story over the last couple of months. And I think also illuminates what it, what will be sort of pathways going forward, you know. So when things really first took hold in the US, we saw the, the, the sort of classic responding to a crisis, you know, there was a big uptick in people doing these massive blasts to their customers. You know, I, I've made the joke that during that two week period, I heard from every business I've ever interacted with how they were handling COVID-19, um, you know, and everybody uh, had the impulse to do the same thing. So we did see this one really huge spike, particularly in email communications right around that time, I think just sort of as, as an initial conversation with customers. But what's fascinating to me and what we've been trying to encourage and, and practice ourselves is that now going forward, it's about being um, even more smart about when and how you communicate with customers. So, uh, you know, blasts were never a great way to do customer success even before this. Um, but the degree to which we're seeing our customers really try to be extremely specific about who they talk to, when and why. It's just getting to an even deeper level than what people were striving for before. Because now there's this extra pressure of, well, is this the right time to talk to them? Like, am I actually going to be getting in their way with other things that are going on because we're dealing with a pandemic? We're just being a lot more thoughtful about whether the content that we're putting into the world is worth putting into the world, is worth taking, you know, one to three minutes of our customers' time to, to tell them. And so, you know, while we saw these sort of initial posts up around emails, in a much longer sense and something I expect to continue, we're starting to see our customers engage more in more non-traditional ways of communicating with their customers. In-app being a big way to do that, find your customers when they're in your app, when friction is lowest. Um, but we're also seeing a huge tick up in the amount of automation that our customers are running. And that's saying something because our customers were already running a fair amount of, of automation on their customers. Um, but the uptick to me signals a deeper degree of segmentation. 
an additional level to be even more specific about when and why you talk to someone. We're seeing more frequent communications as well. So moving away from sort of longer form content and into like bite size, you know, get value by doing this one thing, have a nice day style of, uh, of communicating, which if you're going to do that at scale really does require, you know, thoughtful, um, fairly robust automation, which, you know, we, we, we can support. So I think we'll continue to see that. And I think this whole concept of really checking yourself around, is this content worth putting into the world? How is it specifically going to help my customer? What specifically do I want them to do? And what benefit do I want them to receive out of every little nugget of information I give them? Mm -hmm. I think that's just going to be how we do CS from this point forward. You know, it's just, it's gonna become a natural uh, part of what we do. So what I'm hearing you say is that the timing of the emails, the agility of the communication message, the maybe even the segmentation of, of the attributes that we collect per customer are going to be key in order for us to effectively communicate with customers. This almost sounds like account-based marketing. Yeah, people have drawn that analogy. I think it's a good analogy to draw to a certain degree because why account-based marketing took off and why it's so attractive and so effective is because it is all about trying to communicate like you are talking to each individual customer, like you know them. And, you know, in this day and age in 2020, and certainly if you have a CS tool, the ability to really in-depth know your customer is there, um, you know, from how they use your product to how they engage with you or, or don't. Um, and you can use those, those, you know, sort of initial data points, but you can also make some leaps from those data points mm -hmm. about the type of information that they need and best next steps. And I think that's actually where I draw a particular line. People used to act on their data, and now I'm seeing people act on their data, but also start to make some, some leaps off of that data. If this, I'm going to assume these couple other things and therefore try to get a little bit ahead of you in that regard. Um, so it's exciting stuff. What, what kind of usage metrics do you see them uh, collect? And, and I assume that there's more than just usage metrics, but if you just look at, uh, you know, you mentioned, okay, if they did this in the application, I should send them that because the timing is correct. They're in my right. mind right now trying to do something. Let me send out a timely message about mm -hmm. this particular feature. That's what I'm hearing you say. Yeah. Would that be correct? And so, I mean, there's so many features in an application. How do you pick the right one to and create sequence emails or just emails? Yeah, it's a fair yeah. question. You know, um, metricing your app in the right way is, is, a, is a big challenge. And, you know, we often think of the phrase, you know, my product side is throwing show, showing through a little bit by saying, you know, metricing the app. A product team or a dev team is going to do that in one way, you know, and they want to see every click, every movement, you know, they're really trying to look at the app in a much more detailed capacity. For CS, I usually tell my customers, you know, what, it, what are the most exciting parts about your app? Like if you had a 30 second elevator ride to tell someone what your app did, what are the features that you would call out? Uh, you know, what are the ones that your customers rave about that really bring them value? If you could get your, your customer using, you know, two features, because that would, those would be the stickiest ones. That's where we really want to focus, not only our understanding of how they use the app, but also how we talk to them about how to use the app as well. Got it. Well, if you're, if we're starting doing um, email campaigns or email messages, that are more agile and the communication is much shorter, are we at risk of bombarding them with too many messages? And how yeah. do you mitigate for that risk? Yeah, uh, very much so. You know, I think um, increasingly the inbox needs to be used with a lot of discretion. Discretion that, you know, uh, we've, al we've always sort of assumed like, you know, I have a relationship with this customer, therefore I can send them things. And I think we need to be careful about that attitude, which is why in particular, I am a big fan of other non-traditional ways of communicating with customers. Because quite frankly, our traditional methods, email and phone, they naturally have a lot of friction involved with them. You know? Emails and phones are very traditional. You mentioned mm -hmm. other alternative ways mm -hmm. to communicate with clients. Can you share some of the things that your customers yeah. share with you or how you're communicating with clients that you would recommend others to adopt? Yeah, absolutely. You know, 
uh, phone and email are always going to be part of how we communicate with customers. There's just, you know, there won't be an end to that. Um, but, you know, there is, there is sort of a natural friction point in using those, those means of communication. You know, if you call a customer, you got to hope that they're at their desk and, you know, they're, they're not screening their calls. I mean, heck, sometimes we often even only have uh, office numbers and right now no one's in their office so you know those phone numbers are not are not as useful for us email has has some of the same problems as well you know the threshold on whether someone scans an email and gets that immediate like worth my time not worth my time it's it happens so quickly you know and the more you're in someone's inbox um, you know the the more likely you are to not pass that sniff test quite frankly violate the, is it worth my time, you know, enough, which for some users will be once, uh, you know, you're less likely to get read in the future. But again, you know, we all have very busy inboxes. So there's a lot of trying to clear through inboxes and move past and, you know, get down to inbox zero or however people are moving through their day. Uh, so for me, I'm really interested for our product, for our customers, for the, you know, sort of evolution of customer success. I'm really interested in how, communicating with customers in the app becomes the way that we primarily talk to our customers. Because to me, what I love about that is friction is extremely low right there. Someone's in your product, which means their mindset is on the product. They're prepared to accept information about what they should be doing and how they should be doing it. Now, does not mean that you won't, that you won't get a lot of negative feedback if you're just constantly popping up stuff in the app to them. It still needs to be very relevant and targeted, specific to things that you know that they might need. Um, but I think you just naturally have a little bit of a, a better opening in that, uh, in that communication channel. If you needed to, would you be able to create sort of like a table of what are the topics that you would recommend to uh, nurture through emails? Mm. What are the topics you would actually recommend to call or text about? Mm. And what are the topics that you would prefer seeing customer success teams communicate via, via email? Yeah, I think so. You know, you know, just to start draw a very harsh line on it off the top of my head. Um, anything that's around use of the system, adoption, getting value out of the system, which quite frankly should be the vast majority of what we're talking to customers about. Um, odds are that you want at least some sort of in-app component to how you're sharing that information, you know, so that you're guiding them in a very natural, organic way. Some of the more business matters, uh, you know, your renewal's coming up. Uh, I, I want to I wanna ask if you'll be a reference for a, another upcoming customer. Things that are more relationship-based sometimes feel a little bit better in email you know, because they don't have anything necessarily to specifically do with the product. And so it's better to reach people when they're not actively trying to accomplish something. But I also think there's these very cool moments where you can cross over into both as, as well and say like, hey, maybe I hit you initially in an email and then I follow up in app or vice versa, you know, making sure that I'm, I'm presenting sort of a coordinated front. Yeah, I, to me, it seems like uh, in emails and phones, it would be things that are related to the account management. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the product, I would manage the end user experience mm -hmm. and success. Uh, yeah. Very different. I could have an account with a thousand end users. There's no way I can really email everyone. And it's not even effective. Like you said, the timeliness of it, it's much better to do it in app. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I have things related to the account success overall, um, that might be better managed through emails and phones. Other untraditional communication channels these days are Slack channels that mm -hmm. we keep hearing about, mm -hmm. right? Uh, any online communities. So those could be another route to even scale the communications with customers further, mm -hmm. uh, especially if it's like a one message for everyone. And like you said, we, we keep being bombarded by emails. So it's just one more thing that we can uh, do to augment the way we offer the same messaging to a wide range of customers. Absolutely. What I like about um, Slack and community in particular is that it also takes what might have started as a one-on-one -on -one conversation and potentially allows it to benefit others. You know, I, the number of times I've had what ultimately felt like a really meaningful conversation with a customer about strategy or, you know, an execution of a certain idea. And I'm like, gosh, darn, I wish I had that recorded and I could give it to, you know, six other customers who would really benefit from that same topic. Um, so I think those two in particular are a really nice way to you know, get more bang for your buck when you do put, you know, thoughts out into the world and make sure that it's benefiting a larger audience. 
Well, this was great. A lot of great insights, which I know you were going to bring, Abby, uh, given your experience with both products and uh, customer success. It's absolutely phenomenal, your wealth of knowledge and your willingness to share it with uh, everyone in our community. I want to thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Give us a like if you learned something from this discussion. Share it with others on social media. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.